District demographics would seem to suggest State Senator Hanson Clark has a clear path to Congress, especially after he defeated seven-term incumbent Carolyn Cheeks Kilpatrick in the August primary. Clout and power does not rely in the hands of the politicians. It's in the hands of the taxpayers. They pay the money. They hire the politicians. The politicians are there as servants, servants to the people. So that's the perspective I bring. Secondly, you don't need seniority. You don't need committees. You need to be an advocate and have a heart for the people and businesses who need help, who hire you, and who pay your salary. Why should residents of the 13th Congressional District elect you in November to represent them? Because I'll be an advocate for the taxpayers. And right now our region is experiencing an economic recession and in many places, such as the city of Detroit, it's an outright depression. So they need someone who has the experience legislatively, but also the life experience to really understand what people need and serve them directly. We need jobs right now. People need training for the jobs that are already here, uh, but uh, we can't fill them with Michigan residents. And also folks who even have a job need help getting out of debt because most of their money is going uh, to creditors. So I'm going to be a direct advocate for families and businesses in this region uh, who need economic and financial stability. I'll be their advocate uh, to restore financial security to this region. How do you do that given the scope, the size of the federal government? Well, I've already started working right now. You know, I'm not going to wait till the November election or wait even till January till I'm sworn as congressman. We have pressing issues right now. So I've met with the uh, U.S. Assistant Secretary for Labor to identify training dollars to help Metro Detroiters get trained for job opportunities that exist right now. I went to Washington recently to meet with the representatives of the Federal Emergency Management Agency to be an advocate for funding for more firefighters for Detroit and to help the homeowners get relief uh, whose uh, homes have been damaged by the fire. The reason why that's important, we have to have safe, secure neighborhoods in Detroit if we want to keep businesses there and attract new employers. That's very important. Uh, and then shortly I'll be returning to Washington to speak with representatives in the Department of Education to see how we can keep Detroit school buildings open virtually year-round and nearly 24 hours a day to better train adults and youth for the job opportunities that are here and also to help keep youth off the street so we can have safer neighborhoods. What kind of reception have you gotten so far? And you're not even an elected congressman at this point, but what reception have you already gotten from these officials? Very positive. And it started with uh, the day after I won the primary when I spoke to the President of the United States. And I did ask him for assistance to create a direct uh, job program here for Metro Detroit since we are experiencing an economic recession and depression in many areas and also to um, our region's uh, prosperity is central I believe to our nation's competitiveness globally because we're still the heart of the uh, manufacturing sector at least in the Midwest if not uh, nationally so uh, many of his representatives in government have been willing to meet with me to hear me out. And I think they feel assured when I tell them, when I'm the member of Congress there, I'll follow the federal dollars to make sure they're spent correctly. Uh, I'm not going to tolerate politics being played with taxpayers' dollars. If the money's to go to train people for jobs, I'm going to make sure it goes to train people for the jobs that they can get hired into. When I ask for money to keep school buildings open, to uh, jointly uh, uh, have these schools open uh, to provide police protection as well to the neighborhoods, I'm going to follow that money to make sure it's going to protect the neighbors, to train adults, and to prepare our youth for the jobs that are here. For Democracy 2010, Dave Llewellyn, Channel 7 Action News.